Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben. Nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to the bright side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne and psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our phone number today and every day on the bright side. If you have questions about skincare, skincare ingredients, if you've got question, questions about any of the longevity products or the longevity business, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, love to have you on our team, 831 or 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. You can also sign up and purchase longevity products right off our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. And if you want to purchase any of our truth treatment products, Truth Skin Health products, you can head over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Make sure you take a look at our retinol 5% gel. All right, we're talking hyperpigmentation, better known as dark spots, and we're talking about the relationship of dark spots on the skin to the internal milieu of the body, to internal chemistry, especially as it regards the stress response. Melanin is a pigment of stress in the sense that its electrical nature represents a way for the body to suck up electrical energy, to suck up excess electrical energy. Whether that excess electrical energy is on the skin or whether it's inside the body. Melanin and melanin production occurs everywhere in the body, inside and out. It's especially predominant in the brain and in the nervous system, which makes perfect sense considering its electrical nature. The brain and the nervous system are highly electrical. Melanin is highly electrical, so it makes sense that you would have neuromelanin, which you can see with your, with your eyes. If you look at the brain, if you, can, if you can peer at the brain, you'll see gray matter. Gray matter is melanin. It's melanin's black color that accounts for your brain's characteristic hue. Melanin is found in all of the organs of the body, and this is why melanoma, which is a melanin cancer that involves the cells that make melanin, melanocytes, this is why melanoma occurs in the body as well as outside the body, and this is why if anyone blames the sun or advises sunscreen or sun avoidance as melanoma protection, you can assume they don't understand biology or biochemistry, and that of course means you're a well-meaning physician who very often is biochemically ignorant, unfortunately. Because the body is an electrical system, it's primarily an electrical system, nutrition and chemistry are important, but they're important because they work by facilitating electrical energy. Fundamentally, we are electrical. Fundamentally, health is electrical. If you're interested in learning more about this, get a book called Healing is Voltage. Super easy to understand, and it goes over the electrical nature of the body. He uh, healing, health, wellness, biology, how we move and think and have our being is electrical. And yes, vitamin C and vitamin E and minerals and, and all our micronutrients that we talk about on this program and macronutrients 
nutrients are important, but they're important because they facilitate the movement of electrical energy, or in the case of protein and fats and carbohydrates, they provide electrical energy. So you got two kinds of nutrients. You got your macronutrients, protein, fat, and carbs, and your protein, fat, and carbs represent sources of electrical energy, and then you got your micronutrients, your vitamins and your minerals and trace substances, and the, these facilitate the movement or the use of the electrical energy. This is why junk food is so problematic. Junk food is food that's got lots of electrical energy from protein, fats, and carbohydrates, mostly from carbohydrates and fats, which are super dense in electrical energy. You got the super dense electrical energy without the micronutrients that help you use the electrical energy. The body doesn't know what to do, so it tends to store it. It tends to stash it away for a rainy day, for when there's micronutrients. On the other hand, when you get lots of micronutrients, these facilitators, these substances that help the movement of electrical energy with your macronutrients, your body can use the protein, use the fat, use the carbs, thus the importance of whole foods, unprocessed foods, and thus the incredibly deleterious, negative, harmful, effects of junk food, food that provides lots of electrical energy, but not the facilitators, not the micronutrients that facilitate the use of the electrical energy. The body is an electrical system. Chemistry and nutrition work because they help facilitate the movement of electrical energy. Now, when the body is processing electrical energy, it's typical that whenever, as you would have in a fire, you're going to have sparks. In a fire, you have little sparks of of energy and in the body with all of the electrical movement, you're going to have sparks. Fortunately, there's anti-sparking chemicals. The body's fully equipped. It's got everything it needs. So yes, there's sparks when you have electrical energy and you can have short circuits, but the body comes equipped with uh, dampening substances, substances that suck up these sparks, suck up these electrical pieces, if you will. Guess what? That's what melanin is. Melanin, pigment, is an electron sink. That's the fa fancy way of saying it sucks up electrical energy. It mops up sparks. Melanin, all pigments really, melanin pigment included, are highly electrical. We've talked in the past about how researchers are studying melanin as a possible way to link electrical energy to biological energy, making melanin a sort of biological battery that can be used to power computer chips or even bio computer chips, this transhumanist style. The energy sparks are a type of oxidation and melanin is an antioxidant, which is not only important for the skin, which is exposed to the sun and photo oxidation, potential photo oxidation or sun induced sparking, sun induced uh, oxidation, but this makes melanin also important for the nervous system, for the brain, and pretty much for the whole body. Melanin is black. Black is highly absorbent. That's why I tell you not to wear black t-shirts in the summertime because black absorbs heat. Light, uh, white reflects every, right, white reflects light, black absorbs light. The reason it appears black, the reason black looks black is because all the light energy is sucked up and nothing is released. Black color is a type of black hole. It sucks up light energy and this is why it functions as sun protection. Melanin protects the skin by sucking up light energy. It's like a photon police officer. It arrests photons. Melanin is jail for photons. And melanin is also capable of releasing the photons that have been trapped releasing light and releasing electricity. Melanin sucks up electricity and it can also release electricity. This is so cool. This is a biological substance that acts to suck up and trap electricity and then to release it when it's stimulated. That's what gives it its battery-like powers and its information processing capabilities. This is why melanin can be used as a photo sensor and a photo detector for, for high tech. Melanin is capable of also trapping sound waves and sensing sound waves. It's in your ears. You have ear melanin. This is amazing stuff. Melanin is an electrical energy transmitter. It's found in the ears. It's found in the eyes. It's found in the skin. It's found in the brain. It's found in the organs of the body. Man. And then we're going we're, we're gonna to actually poison the cells that make, uh, that make melanin because we can't figure out why we're making too much. Well, if you listen to this program or your dermatologist or doctor listens to this program, you'll know why you're making too much, and we'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. We 
are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're talking about, melanin, pigmentation issues, skin issues, or if you just want to comment, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, questions about the longevity products, of course, or the longevity business, or you may have heard or read something you want clarification on, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, head over to brightsideben.com or my blog, criticalhealthnews.com. Also, pharmacistben.com, which we update regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. Thank you to Robert Lundgren and Jaunty Collier, who set those up. Also, uh, if you want to search any of the programs, you can go to Ben Fuchs Archives, that benfuchsarchives.com. And thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. Okay, so we're talking melanin and pigmentation. Melanin is a stress hormone. The sun represents a major stressor. We need the sun, obviously. The sun provides warmth. The sun provides light. The sun provides vitamin D. It's a, a major component of vitamin, T, vitamin D metabolism. The sun is super duper important. It's antibacterial, antimicrobial. Feel better when we're out in the sun. We make more, feel better hormones, specifically serotonin, when we get out in the sun. The sun's just good stuff. You don't want to overdo the sun. It's a stressor. That's why we have melanin. That's why we have pigment. Melanin is an anti-stress chemical. It sucks up excess stressors. Melanin is an electrical energy transmitter. It's found throughout the body, the ears, the eyes, the brain, all the organs of the body. It has an ability to turn. This is so cool. Melanin has the ability to turn light into electrical energy, into sound, and back again it can convert photon energy into what's called phonon energy. Phonons are little pieces of sound, like photons are little pieces of light, and electrons are little pieces of electricity. It has an ability to convert sound into light into electricity. Melanin, this is amazing, amazing stuff. Via melanin, light and sound and matter become interconvertible. And through the mediating activity of melanin, light and matter and sound are essentially one and the same. And in this way, melanin is actually a deeply spiritual molecule. And a lot of people have written about this, the spiritual nature of melanin. Melanin converts light into sound, into, into electricity, and back again. We learn in the Bible, God is light, and the beginning of creation is sound. Melanin is, fits in there somewhere. Between electricity and sound and light, you've got three of the most important components of our spiritual natures and our biological natures, and melanin is right in the mix. Melanin's electrical mopping up ability, its dampening effect, makes it the quintessential anti-stress substance. And when we understand this, it becomes obvious why using drugs, especially hydroquinone, which is the go-to skin lightening substance, using these things, once you understand how important melanin is, using these things to shut down melanin production in melanin making cells or to actually kill the cells that make melanin. That's one of the things that happens when you use hydroquinone for a long period of time. You end up killing the cells. When you understand how important melanin is, you can see how silly it is to try to kill melanin cells or to suppress its production pharmacologically. Melanin is our friend. Melanin is critically important in hyperpigmentation or hyper melanization. Too much melanin is not a disease as much as it's a response to stress. Melanin's relationship to the stress response is indicated by the link between hyperpigmentation and the adrenal glands our stress glands. When our adrenal glands are hyperactive, we hyperpigment. If you're hyperpigmenting, first and foremost, consider you have an adrenal issue. Not a sun issue, not a skin issue, and I know if you've been listening to this program, that comes as no surprise, but it will certainly come as a surprise to your neighbors or your friends who aren't listening to this program, probably even to your dermatologist. Ask your dermatologist if he recognizes that hyperpigmentation is an adrenal gland issue. Ask him if he recognizes the importance of melanin. Ask him if he recognizes the link between hyperadrenal activity and hyperpigmentation. The adrenal glands are ridiculously important. In fact, most, if not all, chronic long-term progressive health challenges involve the adrenal glands, our protector glands. 
Our adrenal glands are like having two six foot seven, 300 pound friends walk alongside you when you go into a bad neighborhood. They are quite literally, your adrenal glands are quite literally our bodyguards. Because circulation of the blood is so vital, it may be the single most vital process in the body, how the blood circulates. Blood delivers nutrients, blood delivers oxygen, blood removes toxins from the body. And we say all the time on this program, all disease is cell disease, and all cell disease is blood disease. Because the circulatory system, the movement of blood is so vital, it's no surprise that the adrenal glands control our blood pressure. You have hypertension, you got an adrenal problem. The body is divinely intelligent and divinely inspired. It doesn't make mistakes. High blood pressure is not a mistake. High blood pressure, and it affects one out of maybe five or six Americans, that's pretty significant. High blood pressure is a classic example of a protective response. And not surprisingly, it's the adrenal glands that regulate the blood pressure. One of the ways, uh, one of the ways that the adrenal glands regulate the blood pressure is via salt. Potassium, uh, and really not table salt, not sodium chloride only, but the electrolytes. The electrolytes are salts. When we talk about salt, most of us think of table salt, which is sodium and chloride, and that's a type of salt, but so is potassium, and so is calcium, and so is magnesium. Those are your main salts, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sodium, and chloride. They're your main mineral salts. And guess what controls the mineral salts? the adrenal glands. This is why drinking salt water can be so helpful if you're dealing with adrenal fatigue. This is why drinking salt water, and I'm talking Himalayan salt or Celtic sea salt. I'm not talking necessarily uh, table salt. Drinking salt water, Celtic sea salt water, Himalayan salt water, or drinking your minerals from your Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, from your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, is a great way to support adrenal health. It's a great way to lower your blood pressure. Your doctor will tell you, oh, don't drink salt, don't eat salt because, <laughs> because it will raise your blood pressure. More medical silliness. Sodium chloride are incredibly important for the adrenal glands and for adrenal health. And you can't avoid salt anyway because your body craves it and you're gonna find it somewhere. The way the body, the way the adrenal glands control salt is via a hormone that you don't hear a lot about. It's called aldosterone. Aldosterone can be considered our fluid and salt control hormone. It's an adrenal gland hormone. It's made in the adrenal glands because the adrenal glands regulate salt and they regulate blood pressure. And aldosterone is one of, it, probably the determining factor in assuring the appropriate concentration of electrical minerals, of electrolytes, are not only circulating in our blood, but also inside our cells. Sodium, chloride, potassium, calcium, magnesium are critically important for the health of the cell and critically important for the, uh, for the movement of blood, for blood pressure. In times of stress, when we're burnt out, when something's going on in our lives, when we have diabetes or we have a chronic degenerative disease, aldosterone, the adrenal hormone aldosterone, is a major, major control factor by the way it influences minerals and by the way it influences fluids. And we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about aldosterone on our next Bright Side episode. And then we'll talk about some nutritional strategies that you can use to support adrenal health. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side, coming back with your phone. Phone calls 844-236-6010 as our number right after this break. Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products or blood pressure or skin or my truth treatment products, or if you have success story or you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number two day and every day on the bright side. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you want to purchase any of my truth treatment products, including our retinol 5% gel or any of our vitamin C, topical vitamin C, topical fatty lipophilic premium vitamin C products, and I'm not talking a, a little bit of vitamin C, I'm talking 60, 70, 80% vitamin C. Uh, it, can you imagine 80% vitamin C and not cheap stuff either? That's what our truth serum is made, made with. Anyway, truthtreatments.com. You'll find it all uh, up at truthtreatments.com. You can purchase products right off the website. Okay, so we'll continue talking aldosterone tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll tell you why the sun may be one of the best ways to lower your blood pressure. 
There's a very important relationship between sunshine and aldosterone. We'll talk about that, that tomorrow as we continue discussing melanin, hyperpigmentation, skin issues, and why skin issues are not just skin issues tomorrow on the bright side. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Herman in Texas, good morning. What's going on? Uh, Herman, do we got Herman? Herman? Yes, yes, sir, this is me. Hey, Herman, what's up, man? Hey, I hear you, what's going on? Excellent, sir, good morning, and uh, I got to preface by saying I love you, sir. Thank good you. Good knowledge, I appreciate it. Uh, Thank I you, I appreciate uh, that. Two questions, but... Oh, you're very welcome, sir. I appreciate you. Um, I have two questions, but I'll start with one. One's for my dad, one's for my daughter. Okay. First, my daughter has a uh, had a mole, uh, and they took it off. They biopsied it. They kind of scraped it off, and they sent it, and they got the result saying it's a benign, precancerous. Uh, and what they want to do now is kind of dig around the skin around her now and pull that out, and uh, her mom's totally cool with it. I'm how old is she? I'm how old? It. How old's your daughter? She's four. She's four, She's four. really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. So what else? Now, does she have anything else going on, especially digestive-wise? Constipation, loose stools, complaints anywhere in the digestive system? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Okay. Not, uh, we've. Yeah. That's the first place I would think of looking. If you're positive there's nothing going on there, then I wouldn't be too worried about it. But you do want to make sure that she's getting nutritional supplements, especially anti-cancer ones like vitamin C. I'd be making sure she's doing vitamin C every day. I'd be sure she's doing make sure she's doing her Beyond Tangy Tangerine every day. It's also probably a good idea to make sure she's on a good back, uh, probiotic supplement. I like the Biolumin Nightly Essence. You might want to try the Fucoid Z, which also controls or has a beneficial effect on the digestive tract, on the, on the milieu that the bacteria are living in. And now you say she has no digestive issues, and that may be so, but look, put, place a keen eye on how she responds to certain foods. It's very difficult. It's almost impossible not to have some kind of digestive issues the way we eat, the, just with the standard American diet. It's next to impossible. But because they can be mild or sometimes the kids don't even notice them because they're so used to having them, they can go under the radar. So it's very important that you look for those. You might also want to try topical vitamin C on the area where she had the mole removed and maybe even topical vitamin C head to toe or at least on uh, in the areas that are going to be exposed to the sun. Although, as we've been talking, moles and melanin issues are not only topical, but you can, the sun can stimulate things. So maybe using topical vitamin C, uh, fatty vitamin C on her skin when she goes out to play in the sun. But mostly you want to be considering that it's an internal issue. Use internal nutrients like uh, vitamin C. Also internal vitamin E can be helpful. Maybe 100 international units or 50 to 100 international units for her. Um, and then also her omega-3 or essential fatty acids, omega-3 and omega-6s. Wouldn't, wouldn't hurt her to get on the healthy star pack, but at least the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Just put a little bit in water and have her sip on it like it's a Kool-Aid and then look for other health challenges, especially digestive issues. If they, you don't have them, she doesn't have them, she doesn't have them, but look for them. They may be there. All right, Herman? Cool. Uh, one more thing, sir, just so my, my, her mom understands. Um, so how long do you think we should wait before she even sees a doctor? Because I said I want a second opinion, that being you, because I give you the there's not, There's not, you know, there's not much a doctor can do. You're going to see a mole. I mean, she's not going to, there's no very little incidences of skin cancer in four-year-olds. So you're not going to, you're not going to really necessarily see a problem. Are they going to dig in the skin to look for a potential problem that's about to come out? I'm sorry? What are they, what are they looking for exactly? Uh, honestly, I think they're just... Trying to make money. I'm well, sure. that could very well be. Yeah, that, could, that could very well be. You're going to have to make that assessment for yourself. I can't tell you, but I can tell you right. that the skin cancer is not a disease as a four-year-old. You know, typically, it's very rare that a little kid's going to get is going to have skin cancer. It's very rare that you're going to have a precancerous mole. Look for other issues. Try to correct those, and especially the digestive issues. That's usually where little children are going to have are going to have problems. And then topically, apply vitamin C to the area where they cut, and also, if you can, top, uh, topical vitamin C head to toe, and then also topical zinc oxide can also be helpful. Is she fair, fair skinned, I assume? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. get her on, get her, uh, your best, the best bet is going to be protective for future cancers. I don't know that a biopsy is going to make that much, what are they, I can't even, I don't even really understand what they're looking for, but uh, if you want to prevent further melanomas or, or further moles, I should say, uh, zinc oxide and topical vitamin C, and then make sure she's using her Beyond Tangy and her EFAs and her probiotics internally. Okay, my man? All right, sure. Thank, thank you. God bless well, you. Sir. Take care, bro. Bye-bye. God bless you. 
All right, yeah, topical zinc oxide is the way to go for protection. Topical zinc oxide is the way to go for topical protection. Not only do you get complete protection, which you don't get from most sunscreens, you don't get protection from UVA from most sunscreens. And if you do, they got to use oxybenzone, which is incredibly nasty and toxic. But zinc oxide is non-toxic and it will protect you from all solar rays. Okay, Shane in North Carolina, welcome to the Bright Side. What's up? Hey, I was uh, just blessed with a healthy newborn baby and um, congratulations I, I was wondering what your thoughts are on the vitamin k injection effort uh, yeah vitamin k is really interesting it's made by gut bacteria and when babies are born they really don't have good gut bacteria they have to proliferate over the course of weeks and months and even years um, and that doesn't always happen so they do give vitamin k shots as you know now here's the thing about vitamin k shots which i never understood why don't they give the vitamin k orally why do they give a shot you know, the, the, the feeling is that babies are somehow uh, immune to pain, that babies don't feel pain, and that's why it's okay to give a baby a shot. Uh, it's not a good idea, in my opinion. Now, you, you do need vitamin K, probably, for the baby, but use oral vitamin K. Ask your doctor to use oral vitamin K, and if the mom's breastfeeding, make sure mom is getting vitamin K, because the vitamin K will come out in the breast milk. So, in my opinion, it's not like it's deadly or anything, but... You're causing the baby pain that it doesn't need. You're giving the baby a tremendously high dose of vitamin K, more vitamin K uh, than the baby needs, and you're breaking the skin and sticking a, a, a chemical, a drug chemical, inside the blood. And when we, are, when we get injected with these things, we think we're just getting vitamin K, or if we're vaccinated, we're just getting the vaccine, but there's preservatives and there's excipients and fillers, and it comes in a, a, an oil solution that has to go in, that the vitamin K or the vaccine has to go in. So we're getting a lot of things that aren't necessarily the vitamin K or the vaccine. You follow me? And these are things that, right? These are things that the liver's not getting a chance to process as effectively as if you ate it, as if you took it orally. So if you need, the baby needs vitamin K, ask your doctor for oral vitamin K. It's kinder to the baby, and it's much more, uh, it's safer for the baby in the sense that you don't have the high doses, you don't have to deal with the excipients from the, from the, uh, from the injection. Do you ever Okay, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010. Hey, I don't usually like to talk about the whole vaccine controversy except to say that when you inject something in the blood, you're bypassing the body's fail-safe mechanisms, the, the liver specifically, for purifying the blood, for keeping the blood clean. Remember, all diseases cell disease, all, dis all cell disease is blood disease. The blood is the sacred space. You inject things through the skin into the blood at your own peril. I don't want to get into the whole controversy of vaccines, but it just doesn't make sense. If, if vaccinations are so darn effective, who cares whether you vaccinate or not? Just vaccinate your kid and then don't worry about it because the vaccine is so effective. That's the 800-pound that's the, the, the gorilla in the room. Why the heck does anybody care who gets vaccinated? If you want your kid vaccinated, vaccin vaccinate your kid, fine. And now he's protected against all of us crazies who don't want to vaccinate our children. Vaccination is problematic for a lot of reasons, but one of the main reasons it's problematic is the vaccine contains fillers and excipients. So you're not just getting the vaccine, you're getting the preservatives and you're getting the fillers and you're getting the oil. I tell a story uh, oftentimes, I probably told on this program a few times, I, I was talking to a friend of mine who's in the oil business, in this, uh, not the, uh, in the food oil business, and uh, he was telling me how they were in a meeting and they were going to try to sell, sell their oils to a vaccine company, to a drug company to put in their vaccines because vaccines typically are in an oil base. And come to find out this big drug company, I won't mention their name, this big drug company was actually using rancid oil in their vaccines and they didn't even know it. They didn't even think about it. It didn't even dawn on them that the oils they were using were oxidized. And this is what was being injected into people's blood. So look, you can, I don't want to get into the politics of it. It doesn't sound nice that a government would mandate or force you to put something in your blood. It sounds wrong to me. But the fact of the matter is, is that if vaccines are so darn effective, who cares if you're vaccinated or not? Because your kid will be protected, right? If it's so, so darn protective. Whether it's protect, so darn protective or not, we don't really know. A lot of the, the, the beneficial results associated with vaccines can also be attributed to better cleanliness and better hygiene. 
nonetheless, it should be a parent's right to say whether they want to vaccinate their kid or not. That's all I'm going to say about vaccines. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Ray in New York. Good morning, Ray. What's up, buddy? Hey, good morning, Ben. I love good. the show. Hey, Thank you. Um, yeah, and about vaccinations. What about the, the uh, I don't know, 100-fold increase of peanut allergies? And they use that as... And they use, as, that's right. And that's an, they use that's peanut right. oil. You know, and people don't even realize... You know, exactly. And geez, I, when I was growing up, I'm 54, there was nobody with a peanut allergy, you know? And now... And now it's... it's hundreds right? of thousands. Millions. I don't know. This joke. Um, anyways, hey, Ben... Um, Hey, I've been on the uh, Urphanics for probably a two years, and I love them. They give me lots of energy. Uh, and I really, my only major problem that I'm dealing with that I can't win is uh, excess sebum. Uh, oh, okay. I've always had oily skin. Okay. Um, you know, I've Which... got a receding hairline and uh, male pattern. Bump. Are you lean and mean? Are you built lean and mean? I'm lean and mean. I'm, All right. <laughs> uh, I'm 175 pounds. I, you know, I ride, I bike, I okay. snowboard. You can, here's your issues. Here's what you want to do, okay? That's a classic sign of adrenal health issues, especially especially related to cortisol and possibly the male hormone testosterone. Your body is it's a good thing because you got lots of you're burning fat real effectively and you're building muscle real effectively. But you want to start working on adrenal health. Oily skin is always an adrenal issue and it tends to show up when people are high testosterone producers because of the metabolite, the breakdown product of testosterone called DHT, which by the way is associated with prostate health, prostate disease and also associated with the receding hairline. You probably had acne when you were a kid, too, right, right? Uh, it kicked in about, uh, about 16, yeah. That's and probably that, when your hormones, yeah. that's probably when you started to build and started to grow. You probably got a surge of sure. hormones. And, and, and I, uh, to this day, I have acne, and it comes in waves. You know, I try You're to look, watch what I eat. Are you, I, now, I, I, here's a couple, I I'm going to give you a couple correct. supplements and, I'm going to give you a couple supplements and a couple strategies. First of all, you got to calm the body down. Your body's in a hyper mode, hyper, hyper adrenal mode, hyper androgen mode, hyper building mode. It's just hyper. So you, you got to. Be what's that? <laughs> I'm not psychic. I know. I tell people. I make a joke no, all the time. I, I, I say you know, you know, it's the way the body works. We're all generic, Ray. We're all generic. We're all the same. Now you know. Aside from the superficial differences, our bodies are built the same. So it's not psychic. It's just biology. Your body's in a hyper mode. You got to calm your body down. It's going to end up shortening your life and causing all kinds of problems, no matter how healthy you think you are. So it's really, really important, especially at the age of 54. So deep breathing techniques, uh, massages, relaxing, anything you could do to activate your relaxation nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system. That's strategy number one. Strategy number two, anything that breaks down into sugar is going to put a burden on the system. So oxygenation and respiration, number one, reducing sugar intake. And keep in mind, fruit juice and bread and pasta and potatoes and you know pretty much all the foods we love are sugar. So you're going to have to wean yourself off of that. And the best way to do that is to up your protein and then up your coconut oil and good fats, essential fatty acids. Make sure you're can, using can sugar. Can I interrupt you for a second on that? Sure, sure. Uh, with coconut oil... Um, and believe it or not, and or I, I heard someone else talk about oils in their diet, and I love coconut oil, and I, I, I used to use it all the time, but I literally peanut oil in, in high school or college uh, with you know uh, peanut butter sandwiches, I would it would just give me these deep, really deep uh, acne pimples. Are you talking about uh, coconut even, oil or peanut oil? And, and coconut oil and the peanut oil and basically any oil. If I well, I've never I, I had. It may be that you're not. It may. It may be that you're not metabolizing oil or processing oil. Do you have any other digestive issues? Um, actually, I've been pretty good. I've been on. Um, no, 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 no. Do you have okay. a history of digestive issues? Because this is important information. Have, uh, What's that yeah, in the past? So, you may uh, not be. If I, eat, if I eat carbs, like get, I, I, I take no more gluten, and I find that's really helped me tremendously. Uh, I don't do any kind of gluten pastas or any bread. I eat, if I eat a hamburger outside, I'll just eat the meat and the toppings. Well, here's but, the thing, um, Ray. It doesn't help me to know what you're doing good. I don't need to know that part. I need to know what you're doing wrong. The oils are telling me that there's some kind of burden on the body. The fact that you've got some, you're, you're hyperadrenal would imply that the digestive system is somehow either a stressor, 
and it's causing you to be hyperadrenal, or the hyperadrenal is causing digestive problems. It could go either way, or it could go both ways. So what you need okay. to do, number one, and I got, I got a bunch of calls I want to get to, so I'm just going to go real fast here, Ray. Think of yourself as having an adrenal gland issue, number one. That means relaxation techniques, and that means sugar, uh, sugar reduction techniques. That's, those are the first two things to think about. The third thing is, if you have digestive issues, especially around fats, you're going to need to, you're going to start, need to start using digestive support, including including the ultimate enzymes, which can take lipase, and take them with all your meals. You might want to go get some extra lipase. You might also want to get some extra bile salts. And you might also want to use lecithin with your fatty meals. Then there's tremendous nutrients that are great for skin oils and also great for the adrenal glands and also helpful for digestive health too. And that is specifically zinc. If you're not on zinc, 50 milligrams a day, take it right away. And then, good deal, 50 milligrams zinc picolinate? Uh, I take 30. Try to do 50 if you can. That would be, the, that'd be better. And then get yourself on pantothenic acid, vitamin B5, which we haven't talked about, but we will be talking about here in the next few days because it is so stupendously important for the adrenal glands and for how the, the adrenals turn fats into hormones. Uh, vitamin B5 topically can also help with skin oil, so you can break open a vitamin B5 capsule and put it in, in a topical product. Uh, try not to use something oily, obviously, uh, but a, a topical product, maybe a water mister. I don't know. If, actually, Panto won't go. Get something called calcium pantothenate if you can find it, and then maybe disperse it in a little bit of uh, alcohol, and then use it as an, if it goes, I think it'll go into alcohol, and then use it as a toner, an alcohol toner. If you can find salicylic acid toners, those will also help you from a topical perspective. When I say high doses internally of B5, I'm talking two, three, four grams of it a day, and that's a lot, but make sure you're taking it with your, uh, with your uh, uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine because you never want to take high doses of one B vitamin without the other. Between taking okay. care of your sugar, relaxation techniques, correcting digestive issues and fat metabolism, and zinc and pantothenic acid, and even salicylic acid topically, you may be, uh, you'll probably notice a pretty significant reduction in skin oils, especially Especially with the panathenic acid. I, al I also had that problem with oily skin when I was a teenager, and I got started dosing myself with panathenic acid, and I noticed that it went away pretty darn quickly, and then when I stopped taking the panto, my skin would get oily again. So consider panathenic acid along with your Beyond Tangy Tangerine high doses of, you, of panto. You took the panathenic internally or internally? Internally. I did, but, well, I, was, I made the cream in my, in my skincare business. I made a drying lotion with panathenic acid, and I sold quite a bit of it. Uh, but for myself, I did it internally. Got to move. You That's have, all the time you we have. have. Skin product that, that might help oh, yeah. Go to truth, truthtreatments.com. Send me an email, ben at ksco.com. I got to go, Ray. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for joining us, friends. Have a beautiful, spectacular, awesome day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.